What does this impeachment investigation tell you about GOP priorities? I mean, look, I mean, this is a complete uh, political stunt. It's uh, the MAGA GOP essentially trying uh, to get Donald Trump reelected. I think we've all are under the understanding that this is all being driven uh, politically to damage President Biden. Uh, there has been zero evidence, I mean, zero evidence linking Hunter Biden to any uh, sort of business dealings with the president. And we all know this. Republicans know this. Uh, Republicans have been clear that there's no link or no reason to impeach the president. I mean, many have said so, yet they still opened up this sham uh, impeachment inquiry. There's there's absolutely no reason why we should be going through this exercise. But we all know the people pulling the strings here is essentially Donald Trump and all of his lieutenants. And let's not forget that folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene, she tried to impeach President Biden on the first day that he was in office. And so this has been going on now for a long time. The speaker can't control his caucus and the extremists in his caucus. So now they're trying to impeach the president. I mean, it's not going to work. And there's obviously there's, a, there's no there there. So we're we're going to answer. We're going to push back. We're going to answer with the truth. I mean, you're right, there's no there there, uh, and yet they are marching forward. Uh, what does this week's vote say about Donald Trump's influence over these House Republicans? He controls the House Republicans. I mean, this is, this is Donald Trump's House Republican Party and party. I mean, they've become a group of MAGA extremists. They do whatever he says. Uh, if he doesn't bless their move, they don't do it. Uh, he has folks in there like the Matt Gaetzes and Marjorie Taylor Greens, and now the Speaker and others that do whatever he tells them to do. Uh, Mike Johnson, the new Speaker, essentially got his blessing uh, to be the Speaker. Uh, and he also, behind the scenes, pushed to get Kevin McCarthy removed in the, la in the last uh, cycle. And so he, he is someone that continues to wave and in influence over and over and over again. And in this case, he wants to get reelected president. It's crazy that someone that's been indicted, you now 91 different counts, is controlling the modern day Republican Party. This person is a criminal and a con man, and he controls half of the Congress. I want to ask you also, your colleagues in the Senate will be back next week working on a potential deal on immigration before the end of the year. What are you watching for uh, in terms of that process? Look, this is this is a really concerning process. Uh, I think uh, I speak also as an immigrant who came to the U.S. as a young kid. I became a citizen in my early 20s. Um, I know what the immigration process and how difficult it is. And so this idea that we are going to somehow completely change asylum as we know it, it is crazy. And so I think that we should not stand for it. And Republicans should not be trying to link um, humanitarian aid, a uh, foreign aid, uh, to border policy. And so I also, for those of us in the in the, that are working on immigration policy, particularly those in the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, I mean, our message has been to the administration, uh, certainly to our leadership, that, that border policy and certainly immigration policy should not be linked to helping our allies or humanitarian, humanitarian aid um, in, in Gaza and in other places. And so uh, this, this is really very concerning. I join uh, Senator Padilla, of course, from our state in California and his work. He should be at the table in these talks. And he's, him not being at the table is very concerning. There are few people that know more about immigration policy than him and others. And so the fact that he, our chair of the caucus, are at the center of these conversations um, is something that we're pushing and are concerned about.